I'm not going to do today <coughs> what this other message, but I'm going to incorporate some thoughts in it while I'm doing it. We all realize that in the meeting of Galatians chapter 2, that Paul accounts where he went to see Peter, that there was an agreement of the ministry of Paul and the ministry of Peter, that Peter would go to the circumcision with the gospel of the circumcision, and Paul would go to the uncircumcision with the gospel of the uncircumcision. And what happened is the apostles perceived the grace that was given Paul. And I fear lest most people do not see today the grace given to Paul and the need of his ministry and his message. So I want to read Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened, you being the believers of the Ephesus church, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And that's birth. That's how you're born. You're born in trespasses and sins. And... uh in the sense of that's what your your life will produce, and you're dead to it. you're dead in it because most if we have to die for our birth, we're gone. If we have to live out and then die for what we are and what we're born as, we're done. I mean, we're finished. There is no hope for us. But he said, "You, as he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins." Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. When Satan tempted Adam with the going to Eve with the fruit, sin entered the world when they partook. When Eve partook, then Adam followed. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world. Alright, verse 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. The course of this world is based on sin. According to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. All children are disobedient unless they obey the Lord. That's simple thinking. Obedience today is obedience to the gospel. Believing that it truly does save. Accepting it that way. Verse 3, Among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. That even as others refers to the fact that not all people are going to be in the same category as these Ephesians because the entire creation is by nature children of what? If God doesn't intercede, and God does not intercede into the children of men. They will get wrath. In Romans 5, 9, Therefore being justified by blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Then in this verse he said, uh, And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But he's trying to get a point over these Ephesians that you've come to a point in your life where you're no longer subject to wrath but hope. Okay? Verse five, 4. The God who is rich in mercy for His great love when He loved us, even when you were, uh, when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you're saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His power, uh, of His grace, in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. Would you like me to interpret that? Okay. For by grace are you saved through faith. Is that a good one? Okay. And that not of yourself. You want me to interpret that? Okay. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. You want me to interpret that? It is the gift of God. So now we've interpreted in verse. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself says it is the gift of God. Now, folks, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to believe that. Nor does it take a rocket scientist to understand that if he has the Spirit of God. But a rocket scientist without the Spirit of God probably won't understand that. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Verse 9. Not of works. Now you want me to interpret this. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. What would a man do if it was of works? He would boast about it, all right? And that's what I hear a majority of times. I say, are you saved? Well, I turn from my sins. I confess my sins. Or I ask you to in my heart. I said, that's fine works, but what good will that do with Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? Okay? Now, not a word lest any man should boast. Now, four, then it's going to connect the nine verses. Right? It's going to bring to a, a thought. Four, we are His workmanship. His. Not ours. His workmanship. And workmanship there is places of something made. And the great thought about it is, it provides something for us to be in safety. See, so you're not safe being born. You're not in safety being born, folks. You're going to die. This workmanship provides something for us to be in safety. Something in the, that we're safe. All right. If we were in Christ, we would be safe from death because death wouldn't have a hold on us. Because we're born, we'll die. Yes or no? I mean, if it was true, they wouldn't be searching for the fountain of youth and trying to exercise and get all the help in all that. They keep trying to keep from dying. Okay? Because you're born, you're going to die. In Christ, we have safety from death. We're in the workmanship. Okay? For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? Now, verse 11 through 22 explains the workmanship. Now watch. Wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision of flesh made by hands, that at that time, time past, you were without Christ. In time past, we uncircumcised were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covers of promise, having no hope without God in the world. In time past, we didn't have any hope. We couldn't call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to save us by walking, uh, uh, walking down the aisle or turning from our sins or whatever. In time past, it wouldn't do any good. Well, why would it do you any good now then? If it won't do you any good in time past, it won't do you any good now. Alright, now verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, in this safety zone, in this, this area where you're safe from the death that you deserve, and every one of us in here deserves hellfire. And if you don't think you do, you probably deserve it more. We deserve it, folks. Paul said, I am chief among sinners. And Paul was a law-abiding Jew, but he was doing it traditionally and breaking the commandments of God with his tradition. Didn't see that until the Lord showed it to him. You understand you've got neighbors around you that do not see that they're breaking the commandments of God in their life. They don't see it. They think that they're doing the best they can. Your best is short. Okay? So, in verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes far off and made die by the blood of Christ. These words are important to us in seeing how that God separated people from those even as others. In the verse. Remember back up there we read, even as others? All right, now what? But now in Christ Jesus, you were sometimes fallen, but now by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is verse 16. What? And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. He shed the blood on the cross. So the cross represents the vessel that God used to bring forth the blood. You know what I mean? And the blood is the redemptive power of God. Look back in chapter 1, verse 7. 
He said, in whom we have redemption. Through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Is the blood the forgiveness of sins? Okay? Go back to chapter 2, verse 15, uh, 14. For He is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make in Himself a plain one new man, so making peace, that He might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. Uh, I, you got to pray for me on this, because I'm fixing to show you some verses. As the guy said, these verses will tear you up. Okay? And if you get it, and you don't go running and screaming, you'll understand how that, that handshake meant a lot. It meant everything. Him and Peter. Okay? For through Him we both have access by one Spirit into the, unto the Father. How do you get access? Alright, through Him, Paul said, is He the God of the Jews only and not the Gentiles? Hold your finger just a second. Go to Romans. Show you the verse. You see, would a Jew still question this? He ain't your God. He's our God. They're in a castaway state. They don't understand that God can save a Gentile because they don't understand grace. A lot of people don't understand grace, folks. They think grace comes because you do turn from your sin. Grace don't come because you turn from your sins. Grace comes because you can't turn from your sins. Now watch. Romans chapter 3, verse 29. Is He the God of the Jews only? Is that a legitimate question? Okay. Is He not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Folks, then you've got a verse right there that says He's the God of you. You hear me? What are you doing Ephesians 2 without God? What happened? Did you all die? Did you read Ephesians 2 you were without God? In time past. Is He the God of the Jews now too? See, we've got to come to a point in the Bible where He agrees to that. Right? What did He not send the apostles to? They He's still not their God the way that Paul speaks of it. But He is promised to the Gentiles, and I'll show you these verses, and then we'll, maybe we'll begin to break down some things here and some barriers, which the barriers are broke down in the book of Ephesians. All right, now watch. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision, how? All right, uh, let's put over here, the circumcision is by faith, and the uncircumcision is how? Through. Through faith. Okay? So, reckon it be any difference? Absolutely right. All right. Seeing as one God was justified the circumcision by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. It took His faith to clear the law out of the way because neither one of these characters kept it. And it proved it. What? Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then are we better than they? Here's the question that a Jew would think about a Gentile. Does he think he's better than an uncircumcised Gentile? Would a Jew think he's better? Okay, verse 9. What? Then are we better than they? No, no, I swear we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they're all under sin. Under sin is what Adam did to us. 
God gave the law to the Jews because He had chosen them as His people and they were to be an example of the world. They were to keep the law, do it for their righteousness, and the Gentiles would want to come to their God through them. Folks, I want you to think about something. Take your life. Does a person want to come to the Lord because of what He sees in you? You better think about it. If you do not testify the gospel of the grace of God to people, and you do not act like you like it, why would they want to come to it? I'm not talking about not drinking and smoking and none of that. That's what the world preaches. They. I'm talking about a man that's saved. A man that's saved ought to have people want to come to the Lord because of what he believes. You see what I said in Acts 13? That Paul and Barnabas wax bold. Yeah, he notices it. When I start preaching, my back don't hurt anymore. And my eyes sparkle. I believe it. Folks, I don't want to lie to you. I believe the Spirit of God is power. And the Spirit of God will lead you and convict you and show you. But now listen, folks. He said, verse 31, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Man told me Monday night, You don't believe water baptism. I said, Are you out of your mind? Of course I believe in water baptism. Water baptism saves. He said, No, it don't. I said, Yes, it does. Mark 16, 6. First Peter. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. What do I need to do to interpret that verse? What is that? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Sounds like water saves, but it ain't for us. It's for those to be born again, which is the Jews. They said, well, water, it's just a public confession of faith. You don't have to have it for salvation. You do it to show people you're a believer. I said, you're a liar. And I said, whoever taught you is a liar because anything you do with water baptism, you must follow the entire doctrine of water baptism with it. And he said, what? I said, do you follow the apostles' doctrine? He didn't know what they were. So I went through the apostles' doctrine in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when he got done. He says, I said, you sold out? Do you... Uh, all the things of Matthew 6, do you, uh, Matthew 5, do you know the New Testaments of uh, 1 through 6 laws that Jesus said, the law said, I say, the law said, the law said, I say, the law said, I say, the law said, I say, and the law said, I say. He didn't know any of that. I said, what is the hope of your calling? I said, do you want to go up or do you want to stay here on earth or do you want the city? He didn't know nothing about that. I said, you're in blindness. This is the same guy that goes to a big church, no doubt shells it out in his tithe, and drops... I don't know if he even drops anything in my bucket. So what's the thing there? Pay them to come and hear something and learn something or pay. That's what the Bible talks about too. Because if you do... Help them. You're bidding them God's feed and your protectors are evil deed. That's what God said. That's dangerous, folks, when people think about it. I always think about it. I have people call me on the radio and the TV, uh, uh, the, radio, the telephone, and they say, I cannot believe what I'm learning and have never seen they give a dime. Why is that? And yet go to a church and just load up the bucket. Fear. Well, these people got to, I mean, I got to support them. That's got to be because of the weakness and everything is right. That ain't what Timothy says. Folks, truth is truth, whether it hurts or not. Okay, now watch. Verse 9 again, chapter 3. What then are we better than they know and no wise? For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As is written, there is none. 
And righteousness keeping the law. Go back to Ephesians then. Uh, are you with me? Were we without God in time past? But did He say now? Is He not the God of the Gentiles also? Okay. Ephesians 2, verse uh, 17, He came and preached peace to you that were far off. Uh, I did, did God say, Shame! No, Shane didn't hear God. But did he hear Jerry said? And God speaking. I ain't God, but I read in the verses. Did you know, Shane, you're saved by grace? Now, I don't know that unless God tells him. See what I'm saying? That's what the Apostle Paul wrote, and that's what to be preached. Okay? So he says in verse 17, came preach peace, and you were afar off. It's not like being lost way off somewhere and hear something that can bring you back home. Are you listening, folks? I used to do that. I used to get hunt, lost over in Harrison, Arkansas, in the mountains, those Ark Mountains, hunting. And I'd have to sit down and listen for a car. And then I'd head for the direction of that car, be a dirt road. But I'd get to that dirt road, and then the question was, which direction? Sometimes I'd stop the car and ask them, I'd say, which direction to the highway? Because my grandma and grandma lived off another highway, and man, I'd come out as much as five and eight miles away from their house through the woods. But I'd listen, and anybody's ever been up in Arkansas, you know them whispers thick up there. You know how they grow elk up there now. So, you get lost, you might have to listen. Why? He came and preached peace to you which were afar off. Can you tell me what Paul is designated in the Bible as? Hold your finger there and go to the second Timothy. You see the ungratefulness of the Gentile world, especially in America right now, is that they're not listening to their preacher. And I'm not talking about their preacher in their church. Watch. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11, whereunto I am appointed a... But not just a preacher. He's not just a seminary preacher. Watch the verse. A preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the who? I mean, he's not a Methodist preacher. He's not a Baptist preacher. He's not an Episcopalian preacher. He's not a uh, uh, whatever kind of church of Christ preacher. He's the preacher of who? Now, that's important. Because if you follow Paul and preach what Paul says, who will hear? Which in time past didn't have a God. Okay? Well, it's based on verse 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality and life through the gospel, whereunto, the whereunto is telling you, the gospel that was given was given to Paul, and he would be the preacher, apostle, and teacher of the Gentiles, right? Now, verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. What things is he suffering? He's in prison. Well, let's go to chapter 3 of Ephesians. Ephesians 3 1. So, do you think the God of this world is going to leave Paul alone when he finds out that he has the message that will save Gentiles? Chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Why is he a prisoner? Read the verse. I'm the prisoner of Jesus Christ. The devil can't get to Jesus Christ. You know where he's at? He done got him once. But now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. But there's a man down here that's repeating the knowledge of the Lord. The mind of Christ is coming through Paul. And that mind of Christ coming through Paul is being spoken. Now, with Paul speaking, who could he call? Them that were far off. You with me? The devil knows that he's calling them that are far off, so imprison him. Right? We've been imprisoned. And it's coming up in January. 
You think I'm kidding? You're looking at a man that in the next eight years might die for what he believes. Possible. We were at a Bible conference many years ago. And it wasn't like the Bible conferences, I guess you're thinking, but it was kind of a different one. And there was a man in there who was supposed to be an ex-Jesuit priest. And he made a statement that would wring the hair on the back of your neck. He's been looking for you guys for a long time. And I looked at him and I go, hmm. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? said he's saved by grace. He didn't have much of a testimony, but he said, I've been looking for you guys for a long time. And I thought, wow, what a statement. Is this a preparation for something coming here? And I always wondered about that. Maybe he was a hider waiting for the apocalypse or whatever. Now watch verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner, Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. I do not believe that the wreck of Brother Moore was haphazard. Do you? I believe his salvation of life was of God. Because he should have died there. But I believe that that wasn't... I mean, there was a force behind that. When I look at Jesus Christ in the ship sleep and the winds come up, the God's world would have liked to put them all down. He could have put Jesus and all the apostles down and drown them. Are you with me, folks? They're all in the ship. If he could have drowned them all, he would have fooled the plan totally. What did Jesus come up and do? He rebuked the wind. That ain't God's wind, folks. That's the God of this world's wind. He's got the power over the wind, over the nature, the natural elements. He's the God of this world. And He has the power to do whatever God lets Him do. And Jesus come up and He said, Rebuke the wind. And that ain't God's wind trying to drown them. This man is in prison... He said, I'm the prisoner of who? For you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, who was the dispensation of grace of God given to? For who? For us, the Gentiles. Who in time past had no hope, but now see the God of the Jew, Gentiles also. And it has to be preached to those that are far off. You with me? Now, bear with me. Go with me to John 10. You see, folks, some of throw Cornelius in your face. And they say, well, Peter preached to the Gentiles. I want to know who they are versus who we are. And... In relationship, I want you to understand the difference between Adam and Abraham. Okay? We get a difference here. Obviously, Adam is not under the Mosaic Law. He's not under the covenants as Abraham was later on. Abraham's not under the Mosaic Law, but the law is coming through him in his seed. Okay? Now, look with me in, uh, where did I tell you? John 10? Alright, in John chapter 10, look with me in verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, is he for the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Matthew 15 says, that's who he was sent unto. He sets his apostles to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Alright, so, but now verse 16. And other, say it out loud, other, don't forget the word other, other sheep I am which are not of this fold. 
You hear me? Now somebody go take you there and say, see, he's talking about us. No, 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 no. He's not talking about you, but he is talking about Gentiles. Now watch. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take of it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Amen? Turn with me to John 11. In John 11, look with me in verse 49. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest the same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all. Thank you. Nor consider that it's expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this he not of himself. He is not understanding what he said. I will tell you why. This spake he not of himself. He didn't, he didn't make this up. What did it say he did? Being a high priest that year, he prophesied. You hear me? Don't you kid yourself. There are people in that Bible that prophesied didn't understand a word they said. They prophesied it, wrote it down, and then looked and said, what does that mean? And Peter explained that in First Peter. He said they didn't understand the suffering of Christ and when the glory would be, and they searched it to find out and couldn't find out. And then along came Peter in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Bible says that in John, Matthew 1 through 12, they were showed that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and then 13 the parables start, and the parables are to keep Israel from seeing the truth because they won't listen. And so the parables taught by the Baptist church, and they're out of their minds, the parables have nothing to do with you. Why? Because that's time passed, and who are you without? And Christ. No God, no hope. The ten parables, and if you go in Matthew 1 to 12, the kingdom of heaven is, is uh, uh, offered. 13, the number of rebellion is when he went into parables. And he said, it's given unto you, your apostles, to know and for them not to know. Okay? Verse uh, 51, and this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Right? And are you listening? And not for that nation only. You with me? Is this table over here awake? Is this Jesus awake? Awake. Again. And not for that nation only. That would be Israel, right? But that he also, uh, us, but they also should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Okay? So we might be seeing something here that we need some explanations about. Turn to Romans. Chapter 16. Uh, am I alright? Romans 16. Now, was Abraham born? Was Adam created? Okay. Now remember, they're going to try to make you a born again Christian in this world. Born again? God's Word said you're a new creature in Christ created a workmanship. Now, I'm going to believe God, and I ain't going to believe them. I believe there's a difference between being born and being created. Do you? Do you believe that God had a woman there and Adam was born out of her? The woman hadn't even come along yet, folks. But the old question is, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which came first, Adam or Eve? Well, he ain't born of Eve. Okay? So God created something out of dirt. That's what we are. We're a bag of dirt 
that has the living Spirit of God, the Spirit of man in us, and what we need to keep preserved our soul within that is the Spirit of Almighty God. So a bag of dirt walking around because there was a dirt created and formed and fashioned. God breathed into him the breath of life became a living soul. God gave him the Spirit of man. Okay? Now, Romans 16, verse 6. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Now, there's a man down south, of the onion tells Paul wasn't the first in the body. It did not say the body. It said in Christ. There is somebody promised in Christ, and you just read it in John 10 and John 11. Other sheep, other nation. Yes or no? Okay. Turn with me to Isaiah. Whoa, 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 whoa. No one. Matthew. Let's go there. Let's get all these verses before we go to Isaiah. In Matthew chapter 16. Now, this, this shows you the importance of Peter for the prophecy. Okay? In Matthew 16, verse 16, and Jesus has asked them, say, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You with me? Who? The question is, who do they say I am? Okay? Verse 16. Then... The answer. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is no possible way for him to do that unless it's revealed. Okay? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou, Peter, and upon this rock, the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I'd say he'd take pretty powerful, wouldn't you? I'd say he could bind, wouldn't you? If he shook his dust off on you, what happened? You're dead. Okay? Now, so, is I, am I to believe that Simon Peter, Simon Bar Jonah, Caiaphas, uh, no, uh, Cephas, these are the names. Is Peter powerful and given a power? Okay. Look with me in, and, and what would be, through Peter, what would they have to believe to have a relationship with God? So it's his name, isn't it? Right? Romans Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Peter says, There's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Did Israel before the cross believe he was the Son of God? No. We have no king but Caesar. Who is the king? The Son of God. We have no king but Caesar. Crucify him. So they crucify him. Then the Lord asks the Lord to forgive them. So in Acts chapter 2, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God who made that same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Jesus, Lord and Christ. Got the whole name. Right? The Lord, Jesus, Christ. Okay? Okay? Can they repent of not believing it, get baptized for salvation, and get the gift of the Holy Ghost with remission of sins? <coughs> That's what the verse says. Okay? So, <coughs> in Abraham, what will be the importance to Israel? the name of Christ. Correct? Okay. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. 
Come up to the water and hear it, buddy. So you can go on. I'm a hog and I hope you get an acre. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. He says, And hath put all things under His feet, and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Right? The body of Christ. Okay? Now, tell me about the body of Christ. His physical body. Turn to Galatians. Chapter 4. Verse 4. And when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son. Next words. Made of a woman. Next word. Made under the law. Alright? God made Jesus Christ's body. Adam didn't. Are you awake? Hey! Go! Wait, 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 wait up. Who made your body? Adam. Yes? Who made Adam's body? Then who made Jesus' body? God. Second Adam. Okay? Made of a woman. Born, born like all men are. Two phases of it. Body made, born like man, lives as a man, tempted in all points like as a man is, yet no, no sin. With me? Okay? Now, so this body is going to do something for us. This body, Adam did something for us. That character made us die. This body is going to deliver us. Are you alright? What's the body Adam going to do for you? It's going to make you die. What's this body Christ going to do for you? It's going to set you free. Say yes. Okay. Now, look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, folks, it's about believing. I believe that Adam will make me die. And I concede to it. But I also believe that Christ's body made me live. You see, folks, he didn't have to raise the body of Christ up. He didn't have to worry about it if he didn't want to. He could have took Christ's soul and brought it up to him because his soul would have been with the Father. But no, he takes that body of Christ and represents everything that we need done. It's the righteousness of God. Now watch. 2 Corinthians 5.19 To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. How? Because He let Him die for our sins. Be buried and then come up out of hell and soul back into that body and take that physical, spiritual body up to God. Gave you hope who were far off. And this is coming through your preacher. I'm Jerry Sanders, the preacher Paul. I'm just repeating it. People say, I really like your sermon, your little sermonette. Well, God wrote it. You understand? God wrote it. Oh, yes, I love praise. I'm a man. But God wrote it, folks. I, if I make it up, you're not going to get nothing out of it except maybe a good, fuzzy, warm feeling. Good, fuzzy, warm feelings won't take you to heaven. Knowledge, wisdom, and the power of the tongue.
speaking to the amen of God to the truth. Accepting what he says. Uh, 17. Therefore, if any man be in what? In Christ. Do I want to be in this sin? Didn't have a choice, I am. I'm in Adam. Do I want to be in this man? Yes, Lord, I accept. I want to be in what you did. I believe you, God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. You want to hear a lie? Somebody tells you to confess sins. They're lying flat out to you. They're denying the new creatureship. They're denying what Christ did and applying it to the fact that their confession will get them to heaven. That's denying the Word of God. All right, verse 19, therefore, verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen? All right, now watch. Colossians 2. Twenty-one. No, twenty. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ, are you? Hey, from the rudiments of the world, are you dead with Christ to what Adam made you? He let you come forth in this world for the nature of sin. How many have tried to do good and land up doing bad? How many of you have just quit and tried to do bad? <laughs> How many just said, hell with it? I'm not having a good work at this. Why, well, most people, there are people around you that try their dead level best to live right. Great, and makes good living with them. I mean, they're fine people and whatever, but they still won't go. Because that's still denying what Christ did. Folks, if you can get good enough, Christ shouldn't have died. There is no reason for that. Alright? He said, Wherefore, if you be dead, if we be dead with you, be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? As though living in the world. Did I hear, oh, Let's read again. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the root of the world, why as though living in the world? Are you subject to ordinances? You know what the Jews that first believed wanted to put on you? A lot of there were Gentiles that also believed, and they tried to put them on you. Okay, all you got to do is back up to 16. You see it? What does it say there? Well, it's one of the great preachings in America in the churches. Drink it! Eaten! Holy days! Have it. You used to have a sign out there going to Birmingham. Said basically it was implying that we're all going to hell because we're breaking the Sabbath. And I, I'd look at that sign and say, the people that put it up are all going to hell. Folks, I'm not subject to the Sabbath. I never was. I kind of person didn't even have God. I could have had the Sabbath, but didn't even have God. Time passed and I didn't have no God. I didn't have a right to call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God made a way for a Gentile to call on the name of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Called circumcision. Had to do with blessing the Jew. That's a covenant. But in time passed, I can't have the covenant now because the covenant people are cast away. So once Paul starts preaching, you've got to get the truth of Paul's preaching so you can go back there and act like a Jew. You're out of luck. 
And 100% of your churches in Selma are acting like Jews. And they're acting. That's what an actor does. He acts. And it's called hypocrisy. And folks, tell me, what made you come out from them? You saw they were living it. And what did it say in Romans 3, 9? What have we both proved that all are under sin? What was supposed to be the attitude that they had no? You believe what you say? I know they don't believe what they say. Because I see them say one thing and do another. That's why, folks, when you think of religion, you forget it as a big part of the world. It ain't. America is not based on church doors. Folks, if everybody at the church, it would take one humongous church. All these churches ain't full. There's just a few people there. The majority of them are deer hunting. They don't care nothing about church. They go to the Alabama game, Talladega, and that's like rednecks. I mean, Talladega is on Sunday, ain't it? Is the Alabama game on Saturday the Sabbath? You get me, folks? They can care less. Religion's just a few here and a few there and a few there. Why? Because most people see it what it is. You're looking at me, folks. I sat in a Burger King. I had one of the worst hangovers I ever had in my life in Springfield, Missouri. I was dog nasty mean that morning. I mean, I was hateful. And thank God I was the only one in there. <laughs> and I sat out there, I sat by the window trying to eat that breakfast thing, whatever, and I'm sick. And I look out there and I see five churches in my eyesight. And I said, I wonder where God is today. Which one did he go? Because none of them agree. They all got different doctrines. Is, is, is the God that I know of, is He down here just confusing the hell out of everybody? And about that time come BBC witnesses. Like four or five guys, and they're going to come in there and get me. And that one come in there, and he started in on me. You're going to go to hell, you ain't in church. And, oh, he's just going on to me. My mom said, son, you picked the wrong day. I don't feel good. And I said, you get the hell away from me. And that's exactly what I said, too. He said, oh, I'm persecuted for Christ's sake. <laughs> and I remember he never told me how to get saved. Then why did he help me? I felt bad when he left. But I felt bad when he came. He never helped me, folks. So the witnesses can't help you. They can't tell you how to be saved. Church of Christ can't tell you how to be saved. They're going to tell you to get baptized. Baptists can't tell you how to be saved because they want you to walk out and join the church. The only person that can tell you how to be saved is the man that's sent to you. His name is Paul. He's the preacher. And God is preaching to you that are far off. I ain't got time to go on the rest of this, and there's a bunch more of it. Look with me in Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. What I want you to do is go home this week, read Isaiah 49, Isaiah 42, and see if you see any difference, and then read Isaiah. Read with me of Isaiah 49. 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, you people. From what? That's pretty weak. I'll well, read it again. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, you people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. 
Did you know that you heard Paul say, I thank God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace? Okay? From the bowels of my mother has He made mention of my name. And has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of His hand hath He hid me and made me a polished shaft. In His quiver hath He hid me. And of course, happy is a man whose quiver is full. Deals with a, for, um, a man that has children. And he said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Remember, was Israel to be his servant over here to show the world what they should do to have righteousness? Did they fail? Okay. Now, verse 3 a 4. Then said I, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. The Lord God, when He was on the earth, asked them to repent time and time again. Right? Okay? And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be His servant, to bring Jacob again to Him, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And and He said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel, I will also give thee for a light to who? To the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and His Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of the rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes shall, uh, shall worship, because of the Lord, that He is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and He shall choose thee. Now, verse 8, Thus saith the Lord, In an accepted time have I heard thee. This ain't in Isaiah 42. Everybody with me to Isaiah 42. Paul quotes Isaiah 49.8, and I'm not talking about exact, but he quotes it in 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. That is the quote. Behold, this is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. The day you can be saved is but now. Okay? Not in time past, but now. But if you were a Gentile that worked righteousness, you'd get Isaiah 42. Now watch. Isaiah 42, 1, Behold my servant, whom I behold mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put forth my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Who are we talking about? Jesus Christ, folks. Okay? Look with me in verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant. Listen. For a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. Tell me what Cornelius, who feared God and worked righteousness, had to believe on. The name of Jesus Christ. Now watch. Verse 7. To open the blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. The Lord Jesus Christ. Peter went to Cornelius. It is a fulfillment of Isaiah 42. Did Peter know that Cornelius feared God and worked righteousness? Can you tell me what Titus 3, 5 says? Turn there and see. When in doubt, read the directions. Titus 3, 5, uh, 4. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which what? But according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now I think, Peter said to Cornelius, He that feareth God worketh righteousness. Cornelius the Gentile prophesied about him that the Lord would preach to him.
Cornelius didn't have God until God spoke to him. Did he? He couldn't. I'm sure he prayed and prayed to God and he didn't hear nothing. And then one day, the angel came to him and said, Thy prayers and alms have come up before God. Peter said, You know, it's an unlawful thing for a man that's a Jew to keep company or come to one of another nation. But I see that what God has cleansed, call that not common or unclean. He said, I perceive. And he said, You that fear God and what? Work righteousness. Working righteousness is a covenant. A covenant. Okay? Not by works of righteousness which we have done. What were you a stranger from? The covenants? Aliens? From the commonwealth of Israel? You didn't give a flip. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were afar off were made nigh by the blood of Christ. The mystery of the blood that it would be presented to you is the pure grace of God. The redemptive power that God has for you. See here. Are you with me? I better quit.